to show you how to assemble one of our brand new flower dies and that is the Californian poppy. So I've just got a couple here of what the final thing is going to look like and I'm going to show you how to assemble it, how to manipulate, how to cut it, how many petals to cut and even how to shade the petals as well. Now the California poppy is part of our brand new like flower or floral range and there's six floral dyes in that collection um, all designed by our fantastic Olivia Rose and this one obviously is the California poppy. I've already shown you guys how to put together the fringe tulip so if you're curious about that one make sure to head on over and check that video out as well but um, I'm sure I'll be doing others um, in the next couple of weeks or months or maybe some of the other designers will be doing some so make sure to keep an eye out for future videos as well but if you love your florals and you like the uh, look at this flower and you think you're interested in creating it I'm obviously going to use our crepe paper um, but you can use paper or sculpting foam or other things but today I'm going to be using our new crepe paper but if you're interested um, in checking out how to put this together then stay with me I'm going to bring down the camera as per usual so you can see a little bit closer up of what I'm doing and we'll get started okay There we go. Sorry about that. It always takes a little bit of uh, adjusting to kind of get the frame right. But this is the California poppy dye that I'm going to be obviously showing you guys how to do. And this is how it makes up. So you get five dyes on the sort of set. Obviously mine is a sample packaging, but you'll get pretty nice new packaging. Um, and there's three petal shapes and there's two kind of center shapes okay and basically for this die you just need to cut one of everything some of the other flower dies you do need to cut multiples of the petals or multiples of the center this one is pretty straightforward because you just literally need to cut one of everything that you get um, and it's quite nice that they are different so you don't have to cut the same one twice and get exactly the same shape or petal you can obviously get a little bit of a slight variation between the petal shapes. So that's the die. And then the crepe paper that I'm gonna use is the Serenity set. Obviously mine has been opened and used, but um, the crepe paper is obviously new as well and it works fantastically with those floral dies. Um, and that's kind of what it's meant for to work alongside sort of our floral dies. And you'll see that I'm going to end up using the kind of orangey yellow tones and they're just fantastic for the california poppy dye or even that flower they're kind of generally in this kind of color range so that's why i've chosen this one in each pack of crepe paper you will get 10 um rolls of a different color and they're 150 percent stretched so they're really nice and thick and stretchy um okay so we'll get started what you need first is you need to obviously cut all of your elements out. So I'm going to take some of the crepe paper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut one piece out just for the sake of it. But I want to cut any flower dies that I'm doing, particularly with crepe paper, I want to cut along the grain. And when I say that is the grain of the crepe paper that runs up and down I want to cut my petal with the grain because if I cut it this way and I try to pull and manipulate my petal I just end up stretching the petal outwards and this way when I start to manipulate and pull the petal I'm going to cup it and pull it outwards like that okay so I'm just going to grab my machine and I'm just going to cut the one out again with the grain. Like so. And with the crepe paper, you can cut a couple of layers at once, particularly if you are using one of our fold away machines. Um, but just be wary, don't cut too many if it's a really intricate die 
or you don't want to cut too many because it does kind of flatten out the the texture on the crepe paper but you can get away with cutting at least a couple okay so there we have kind of what the die or what it will look like once it's kind of cut okay with regards to the center pieces obviously these don't need to be cut along a grain because you've got bits going everywhere so it's not going to make much of a difference so those just cut out on a normal square and that'll be absolutely fine okay what i want to show you is how to kind of um add some color or shading to the petals okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna bring in a craft mat and I'm going to be using some of our acrylic paint. Now, this is relatively new as well to Sizzix, and this is our creamy acrylic paint. And they come in a variety of colours. I believe there's 12, but don't quote me. <laughs> and they all kind of match some of our colour story colours. So here I've got a Mango Tango, I've got Lemon Cello, that lovely yellow, and Hibiscus, that sort of dark pinky red shade, okay? And I'm just going to check the amount. There are 60 mils in each and they're just a really nice consistency. They're really creamy as the name suggests and you've got a really nice elasticity to this kind of paint because it's kind of designed specific, specifically for crafters. So it's great for using on things like floral makes, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my yellow and pop a little bit on my craft mat and I'm going to work this on the edge of the petals. When you're applying crepe, um, acrylic paint to crepe paper you don't want to use any water because it's kind of going to manipulate the crepe paper okay. Some thicker crepe papers can kind of take the water but ours you kind of want to just kind of dry brush um, a wet acrylic onto it. If you're using anything like a pen or an ink or something like that like a distress ink that's a little bit drier don't worry about it it's not going to change the crepe paper at all um but with acrylic because it's a wet medium you kind of want to not apply too much because it's going to make the crepe paper wet okay so i've gotten quite a lot of it off my brush i'm just kind of dry brushing i'm just going to add small amounts and this is going to work as like a highlight on the tips of my petals and I'm going to add to the back as well because we are going to see both sides of this, these petals and this flower. Okay. And then once I've kind of done that, I want to add just a little bit more um, vibrancy and opacity of the colour to the very, very edges. So I'm going to take a little bit more and then just go over and add it in a little bit more concentrated to the very tips and because I'm doing it on the very tips it's not going to change the structure of the crepe paper too much and actually it doesn't matter if it does kind of crinkle a little bit at the edges because we want that crinkled effect and I'm going to show you how to do that um, as you manipulate the paper anyway so on the very edges it's not too bad if you're adding a quite a little bit okay okay so we've got our light yellow on the edges and that just highlights that edge color okay I'm going to kind of get what I can off of my brush I'm not going to wet it and then I'm going to take the mango tango which is the orange color and it actually is very similar to the crepe paper color that I'm using um, but that's absolutely fine and again I'm going to take quite a bit off of my brush and I'm going to work it from the center upwards, okay? And this is just gonna add that sort of mid-tone shading. And again, I'm gonna turn it over and do it on this side as well. I would normally do it on the opposite petal as well, but just for time's sake, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do one. If you just wanted to add dark colours using things like our uh, Sizzix permanent markers or something like that would be absolutely fine but if you did want to add a sort of more of gradient and you wanted to add the lighter tones you definitely need something like a paint um, otherwise you're not going to get that colour payoff.
okay? I'm now going to take the hibiscus colour and I want the tiniest amount of this, so I'm really going to get this off of my brush and it's actually quite nice that I haven't washed up my brush off because then the colour won't be quite as um, opaque because it's kind of slightly mixed into the orange on my brush and I'm just going to sort of sweep that into that orange. And you can go back in and add more colour if you want to, but it's kind of best to start off light and then add more as you want. Okay, and then once you've got all your colour down, you want to obviously leave that to dry. You can speed up the process by using one of our dual speed heat guns, um, but they don't take too long to dry. But you do want to wait till they're completely dry before you go and manipulate them. I'm going to move that to one side and then I've got all my pieces already kind of done. So here they are. And just to reference back to the actual metal die cut pieces, you can see I've got this one, which is here. We've got this one here. We've got this one, which literally you just need one of those cut outs. And then we've got these two here, okay? So those are all your pieces and you've got one of each. And then I've obviously, it painted or shaded the petal pieces and the center pieces they can stay as they are okay so now we can get our kind of stem i'm going to do the stem before i manipulate the petals so i've got just a florist wire and um, just a green wire and then i've got a wooden ball you can kind of use like a medium or a relatively large size um whatever you kind of prefer to have as the centre. I'm going to use the slightly sort of medium, smaller size. And in the Fringe Tulip um, assembly guide, I showed you how to cover the bead and then pop it onto your stem. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to glue it onto my stem and then cover it just to show you two different techniques or two different ways of doing it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hot glue gun and just add some glue into the centre of my bead. And then I'm just going to pop it on and leave that to dry just for a couple of seconds. And they should dry pretty quickly. While that's drying, what you want to do is you want to take just a piece of crepe paper, the same colour as your sort of centre pieces that you've die cut. And we're going to cut like a little oval, um, like an oval circle shape. And this is going to be used to cover the bead. Like so. Okay, so we've just cut that. And then you can pull that apart in between your thumb and finger and that can wrap around your bead. If you find it's too big, just take your scissors. Once you've obviously pulled it apart, just take your scissors and just trim some bits off that's absolutely fine but you kind of want those bits to meet here okay uh, and i'm just going to use my hot glue gun again and pop those bits there and then we can fold in the sides and it doesn't have to be anything too neat because it's going to be mostly covered by your center bits in your element in your petal elements as well and again on the other side And just kind of hold it. I should have worn my um my thing thimbles from the glue gun accessory kit to stop me from burning my fingers, but I always forget. And then I get glue all over my fingers. <laughs> okay. So we've got our um covered bead, and then we can bring in the center elements. And I want to slightly manipulate those. So I'm going to bring in my paper sculpting kit. So I've got the foam pad here and then I've got 
the largest ball tip end and I'm just going to work those with that that ball and create a kind of sculpted center If you've sculpted paper with these kind of paper sculpting kits, it's exactly the same. Just kind of be a little bit more gentle with the crepe paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a die pick and I'm just going to punch a little hole in the centre of each one. You could do that before you sculpt it. Um, it kind of works either way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread those onto the end. So I'm going to work with the smallest one first. And I'm just going to hold that up there while I just pop a little bit of glue around here and drop that on. Just make sure you don't get any of the elements in the glue. I did this way better before because I can get it really close to my face but I'm trying to work with it <laughs> a little bit further away from my face. And my eyes are, it's not the best. <laughs> okay. And then we can thread on this one as well. Lift it up. And just apply a couple of blobs of glue. And let it kind of naturally mold to that bead if you find that some of them are kind of coming out where you don't want them to you can always just add just a little bit of glue onto that piece and then just stick it down like so i'm quite happy with that one i think so we've got that center bit so i'm going to pop that to one side a second while we bring back are petals and I'm going to sculpt and kind of manipulate these to make them look a little bit more 3D. I'm trying to get the glue gun strings off me. <laughs> so what you want to kind of do is you want to create a ruffled edge around the sort of edge <laughs> and then you want to create a little slight sculpted cup shape to the center. Now I'd have used the fold and form tool in the fringe tulip um, assembly guide you can use this if you want to and what you can do is feed it through your fold and form tool and you can kind of work the petals up like that so just give it that curve and then I would slightly pull between your two thumbs along the edge, just like we did the fringe tulip edging. And then I would just take this middle section or the it's a bottom section really, in between your two thumbs and give it a slight cup shape, okay? And then that's the kind of petal shape that you wanna get, okay? So again, popping that into your fold and form tool. Now, just be careful because particularly if, um, your petals not fully dry you have to be quite gentle with popping it into the fold and form section because it can kind of manipulate and rip so just be gentle mine's not completely dry yet so that might be why just give it a little bit of a curve then i'm going to create a lovely waterfall effect just by pulling apart and then pushing back together the edge and then i'm going to cut that bit there like so and then we've got those petal elements so I'm going to do that again with all of these and once you get into a rhythm it's really quick and easy and because this flower like the fringe tulip that I showed before has fewer kind of petals that you need to cut and shape and shade <laughs> um it's one of the quicker ones to kind of put together so you can actually make a bouquet um or a project 
quite quickly. Um, whereas something like the rose or the ranunculus or something like that obviously requires so many more petals that it does take a little bit more time. So there we go. And then I'm going to do this last one. Just give it that curve. Pull the edges, push them back together to create that waterfall effect and then cup the bottom or the base. Okay, so we've got all of our sculpted petals. I can now start to put them on there. What I am going to do quickly though, before I do that, is I'm gonna bring back that foam pad and my die pick, and I am going to poke a hole in the bottom of these two that are connected petals, just to make it easier to thread onto my wire, okay? And then I'm gonna bring back this part, and I'm just gonna thread that through the hole that we just made, and just add a little bit of glue to the ball. And just cut that around that centerpiece. Okay, so we've got one there. I'm gonna thread on the other one. And you'll kind of see which one's the bigger and which one's the smaller one um, to show you which order to pop them on in. But it actually doesn't matter too much if you do them the wrong way. Um, that's what's really nice about the California poppy. It's a really nice organic shape that looks different every single time. So it's absolutely fine. And there we go. I'm just gonna make sure that I put the petals in between those kind of gaps. Give it a bit of a scrunch. So I've got those two there. And then this little extra one, oh, the glue. I'm just gonna add in where I think needs it. So I might actually pop it just here. So all I'm gonna do for this one is just put a little bit of glue on the base and then just literally attach it like so. And there we have our California poppy and that's so pretty and when you sort of start to bunch them together you can get a really gorgeous effect obviously this one here I haven't shaded just to show you guys um a different kind of technique when you don't shade them you tend to get a little bit more of a closed flower um look so it depends what you're kind of going for and how many you could shade some you could not and you could create a really gorgeous bouquet okay so I'm gonna bring the camera up just to say my goodbyes and show off the dye just once more and yeah, we'll get going. There we go, okay. So there you have it guys, that's a step-by-step -step guide of how to put together that gorgeous poppy. Whether you're used to making flowers or you're kind of new to it or you've never worked with our crepe paper before or something like that, this is a really, really easy, fun one to kind of start off and dip your toe in. And they're just amazing as soon as you put them together, just with those kind of three petal die cuts. Um, like I said, it is available on our Sizzix website along with the other six floral dies along with the French tulip one that I made um, in a couple of videos ago. So if you are interested, make sure to head on over to the, this is website and check them out. If there's any of the flowers that you see within that collection or even on the Sizzix website in general, um, definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to see me put them together, if you're a little bit unsure about something, or maybe you want a little bit more education with the crepe paper or anything like that. I am happy to do those videos, so please let me know what you'd like to see. If you recreate these flowers at home, I'd love to see pictures as well. Definitely use that hashtag MyMakingStory if you're posting any images on social, on our Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. That is that is how we see them and I love to see them and I love to see when people recreate anything that I do in these videos. It really makes me smile. So hopefully you enjoy um, creating some lovely florals at home. Um, and I'll see you in the next video, but until then, stay safe and keep crafting. Thanks. Bye.